The question is, should you be doing sit-ups? Should you not be doing sit-ups? Now, I want to go through with you a little exercise so that you can know what exercises you should be and should not be doing. Are sit-ups good for you or are they not? Are they? Is it a bad exercise or is it not? I just want to clear that up in this whole talk. I'm going to post this on my YouTube. I post these on my YouTube every Friday. So if you miss anything, just know it's going to be there. Okay. And also a lot of the answers, um, a lot of the information that I share on these, you can find that information in the link in my bio. I have a whole guide plus free full length exercises. Okay. So Today we're going to talk about sit-ups. Are they good or are they bad? And let me go ahead, if you're just here and you want to go on to something else, let me give you the answer right away. Sit-ups are good if you can do them properly, okay? Sit-ups are fine if you can do them properly, but they're not fine if you can't. They're not fine if you're not ready for them or you don't know how to do them properly, okay? So that's the short answer if you have to go. And if you want to go, come back and get the long answer, you can go to my YouTube channel on Friday at 2 o'clock on Mommy Mango. You'll see the full answer there, all right? Um, let me give you a little background because here's the thing. I don't like to just tell you stuff and have you take my word for it. I want you to understand it like visually, physically. So we're going to go through a little demonstration to where you are going to understand if sit-ups are good for you or not. And also how to tell if other exercises are good for you or not. Because here's the thing. If you're doing exercises that are balancing your core muscles together, you're going to start seeing results. But if you are doing exercises that you don't know how to do properly, you're not engaging your core properly, um, you're not strong enough for that particular exercise, not only will you not see results, but you can also make your mommy tummy worse. I've told this story before, but I had a lady who came to me who was doing CrossFit and she said to me, I went in there to get a get abs of steel and I came out with a point to your belly. My belly actually started looking bigger, okay? So we wanna make sure that you understand what you should be doing, what you should not be doing, all right? So that's why it's important that we go over this. All right, I'm trying not to fall off this chair. All right, so let me start off with um, saying, if you have diastasis recti, Diastasis recti is ab separation. That's where during pregnancy, all this gets stretched out. So not only do your muscles kind of stretch and, and weaken, um, but also the connective tissue that connects the muscles together. Those tissues, like this white part, the white part, the connective tissue wraps all of the muscles of your, all your muscles all over, but right now we're talking about the abdominal wall, wraps them all. The That connective tissue also stretches, okay? It, it stretches all around the core, not just the front. And this midline here, if it is stretched, so it goes from this thin line to something wider like this, that is called diastasis recti. It's called ab separation. Diastasis means separation. Recti is referring to the rectus abdominis, so it's separation of that from each other. So you see the rectus abdominis, the six pack muscles? This is like that. That is that midline tissue stretching and the two sides separating from each other. So that's what that is, all right? Here's how to know if you have it. Um, and in doing this with me, you're going to kind of see, um, it's gonna also help you understand what we're gonna talk about next as far as like sit-ups and how to know if an exercise is right for you or not. How to know if sit-ups are good for you or not, okay? All right, so I want you very quickly to lean back, look down. If you see coning or doming coming up through your midline when you lean back, you know, like, pretend like you're doing sit-ups, all right? So if you lean back and you look down, if you see coning or doming coming up through your midline, that's diastasis recti, okay? If you see that, say me in the comments, all right? Um, yes, so I see uh, Anthony. I know I am a man, but this information is relative to my situation as a senior. Yes, that is not uncommon. I get guys who come to me because there's not a lot of information specifically for guys, but a lot of this information applies. And what I'm going to talk about is super important for guys because I have had guys come to my program, not because they had a stretched out stomach because of weight or anything, but I've had guys come to my program because they were lifting weights really heavy, doing really hardcore traditional ab exercises, and they weren't either engaging properly or they weren't strong enough for it. And so they caused diastasis recti, that stretching to happen because of the increase of pressure. You ever see somebody lifting really heavy weights, um, like super heavy lifters, and they're like straining. They're wearing the belts and they're like, 
all that pressure is building up in their core and that pressure just like when you lean back and you look down you see that that's pressure coming up through your midline making it bulge it's pressure it's all about pressure management at the end of the day okay when we're pregnant we have a baby in there putting a lot of extra pressure it's pressure okay that's the issue and for a guy who's lifting heavy weights they might have that same pressure on the inside that causes the diastasis recti so i have had guys come to me because it's the same issue okay um, there's some different nuances because we have different things that go on with going on with us as women with babies in our body as far as like other issues that might be affected like rib flare hip issues just but for a guy diastasis recti that's very applicable okay um i'm going to come to these questions in just a few minutes let me go over really quickly um let me go over really quickly about these sit-ups because I just want to make sure you understand there really is no good or bad exercises. I get lots of questions. Can I do this exercise? Should I be doing this exercise? What about crunches? What about sit-ups? Here's the thing. There is no blanket answer. There is no good or bad. Now, I say in my videos to raise attention, hey, this this um, exercise is better than sit-ups. This is better than sit-ups for your mommy's time because a lot of people are new on their journey. They're beginners. They may not, their deep core might not be strong enough. And sit-ups are really high pressure, intense um, exercise. And a lot of times we don't know how to engage properly. So if we don't have, we're not strong enough, we don't know how to engage properly, then sit-ups, I generally recommend don't start there unless you know what you're doing because you don't want to make your situation worse and get that pointy belly that that um, friend of mine was telling me, well, she became a friend, but a lady who came and to me for advice in one of my Facebook groups who was like, I did, I, who was, she was like, a, I did a CrossFit program and I got this pointy belly instead of the abs of steel that I wanted, okay? So we don't want that to be you. All right. So with a sit-up, if you are doing a sit-up, boop, boop, just pretend I'm doing a sit-up, you know? If you're doing a sit-up and you're leaning back, you're increasing pressure and you see it bulging coming through your midline and it's excessive. So this is what I mean by excessive because I don't want to scare you. If you see doming coming up through your midline, which I saw a lot of you said me, when I lean back, I see doming coming up through my midline, it's popping up like that, that's not horrible, okay? What is problematic is if that doming is excessive. That means when you press, like let's say you're doing this, so lean back, press it. If it's squishy, okay, if it's squishy, then it's okay. That means it's not pushing it to its limit, okay? But if, it, if you lean back and you press it and it's firm, like the skin is super taut there and it's firm, then that's what I would call excessive doming and you're pushing it to its limit. The only place it has to go is more. It's gonna push more. So if you're doing a sit-up, um, a V-sit, if you're doing one of the exercises that I show you on one of my channels, it is, you're seeing excessive doming to where when you press it, you it feels firm, like it couldn't push anymore then you need to back off of that exercise and reevaluate your situation. That is one of the signs that I tell my ladies in all my programs, hey, if you see excessive doming to where when you touch it, it's very firm, then that exercise needs to be reevaluated, okay? Here's what I want you to try, okay? Let's say you did this test with me, you're here, you lean back, you look down, you saw coning and doming, right? So do this with me right now because I want you to try something to see if you can't properly engage and reduce the doming. Because if you can do that, then you can do this exercise all day. You can do your B-sits, you can do your sit-ups. If you can engage properly and reduce that doming or make it to where it's less firm, all right? So here's what I want you to try. Whenever you find that you're getting excessive doming, stop and evaluate. This is what I want you to do. I want you to pretend as though you are bringing your, I know this is a, this is one of the analogies. I am, I know that there are guys watching right now, so I just want you to have this analogy with me. Um, something that kind of makes sense. And this is a definitely maybe a little bit of a stretch, but I want you to pretend as though you are trying to bring your hip bones together. I know it's weird, but I want you to go down to where about your hip bones are, pretend as though you're bringing them together, okay? So relax, inhale, exhale, bring the hip bones together, 
all right? Then hold that, I want you to lean back. And I want you to see if that reduced the doming or made it a little softer, okay? If it did, I want you to say yes in the comments. Yes, if you saw a difference, okay? What we're trying to do is we're trying to engage our deepest core muscle, our transverse abdominus. So you have four layers of muscles here, okay? Yes, I see somebody said yes, it did reduce the doming, okay? Yes, um, Natalia said yes as well. Diesel and Bonnie said yes, okay. Can you repeat it please? Yes, I will repeat it. This makes sense, says Anthony, yes. Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm going to do it one more time um, and just know there'll be a replay on this on my YouTube channel this Friday at two o'clock, okay? But I want you, we'll try a different analogy actually, just in case that one didn't quite make sense. But remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to reduce the midline doming that we get when we lean back. So by just doing your regular way that you might lean back, you look down. If you see coning and doming coming up through your midline, we're trying to engage the deep core muscle. Again, you have four layers of muscle of the abdomen. You have the rectus abdominis, you have your internal, your external and your internal obliques, and then under that you have your transverse abdominis. We're trying to really activate the transverse abdominis because it wraps around your waist and cinches you in this way. It tightens and it flattens out that diastasis recti too. It pulls that tissue nice and taut to where it's flat. And that's the muscle we're trying to engage right now to kind of help. So when you're doing an exercise like a sit-up that's really focusing on your external abs, your six pack abs, and you wanna make sure that you bring your deep core muscle, your transverse abdominis along for that ride. What happens is when you do sit-ups all the time and you're not focusing on the deeper core muscle and you're just allowing your rectus to do all the work, um, which is what it does, the rectus abdominis does flex you, so that's what it's supposed to do. But if your deep core isn't strong enough, then you're gonna have all this pressure bulging out your abs. So when you're doing this thing, your whole ab, all of it's bulging. Not even just your midline, sometimes you'll see your six pack bulge up like a bread loaf, okay? You should be able to do a sit up with flatter abs. What's gonna flatten your ab is that deeper core muscle, the transverse abdominis that wraps around you and wraps around you and cinches you in. Okay? I hope that's making sense. If it's not, watch this replay on YouTube, Mommy Mango, two o'clock on Friday. Okay? So we're gonna try that demonstration again. So first, you lean back, you look down. If you see coney or doming coming up through your midline, I want you to try this analogy. Pretend as though your belly, okay, this is not where my belly button is. My belly button's way up here. Pretend as though your belly button is down here, like literally like inches below. Pretend like it's between your hip bones. And instead of drawing your belly button in at the center, I want you to focus down low, low between your hip bones and draw that area in. Okay, the other analogy that I gave before was pretend as though you're trying to bring your hip bones together. I know you can't do that. It's not possible, but in your mind, pretend as though you're gonna inhale, relax, exhale, <sighs> pretend as though you're bringing those hip bones together. Now I want you to lean back and see if that doesn't reduce that doming at the midline, see if that doesn't help flatten out your abs, and only go back as far as you can keep those abs flat, okay? Come up, all right? Did that help? Yes, that's a wow, okay, yes, all right, wonderful. So that's what you have to do. The thing is to make sure you're doing a sit-up properly or any core that you just have to, we're trying to use our muscles, our abdominal muscles in balance with each other. So, when you are doing something like a sit-up or a visa or anything that's causing excessive doming, stop. Evaluate the situation. Try better core engagement by activating that deep core muscle, by pretending as though you're trying to draw those hip bones together. You know, learn to know what it feels like to engage your transverse abdominis, that deepest core muscle that wraps around you and singes you in. Activate that muscle and see if you can't minimize the doming. If you can't, that means that you need to strengthen that deepest core muscle. That means it's not strong enough, it's not ready for it yet, but it's okay, you will get there. You just have to train that deeper core muscle to be in balance with your more superficial muscles. And that's what my programs are all about. In my program, we will, what we do is we kind of reverse engineer the exercise. So eventually you'll get to sit ups. But what I do in my program is I'll have people engage their transverse abdominis 
and start going back. We have exercises where we just kind of start taking it back and you only go back as far as you can keep the stomach flat. So here's something you can do. This is just giving you this information for you to practice at home. Practice what I showed you. Engage that deep core muscle and go back as far as you can while keeping it flat. As soon as you start losing it and you start seeing bread loafing, let me try to do it. As soon as you start seeing bulging coming out when you're leaning back, where it's, you know, like bread loaf coming up or this uh, midline bulging out, as soon as you see that, come back up, okay? Relax, then go back, flatten, engage the deep core, come back as far as you can. And hold that and just as far as you can go while keeping it flat and, and come back up. Do that. Do that at least four times a week. Spend some time, 10 minutes. Just doing that is going to help train your deep core. And eventually you're going to get back farther and farther because it's going to be stronger and stronger. And then you'll be able to go back until you can go back and do that full sit up. Okay. So when you come across my TikToks, my Reels, my Instagram, whatever channel that you're watching this on, when I say stop doing sit ups, these are better than sit ups. I'm talking to you because I know that's a tough one and you have to know what you're doing so you don't make your situation worse. But there are really no off limit exercises. They're just exercises that you may not be ready for yet. Okay, so again, really quickly, when you come to an exercise where you see excessive doming, stop, evaluate, engage your deep core, try it again. If you don't see any minimizing of the excessive doming, you know you need to strengthen your deep core. Reverse engineer that exercise. Do a little bit of it. If you're in a class, let's say at a gym or something, and they're doing V-sits, you don't have to go back all the way. Just go back a little bit. Go back as far as you can. You know, if you're doing something with your legs up and you're bringing your legs down, double leg kind of going down, and you see your, your stomach is popping up a little bit, don't go all the way down. Just put your legs just as far as you can till you see it's about to pop up and then stay there and then come back, okay? So you just want to really... Really, it's more so about just knowing your body, okay? Because every body is going to be different. So um, what I would love for you to do is to use exercises like the free ones I have in my guide, all the ones I have here in my short videos and all that. Start using those to strengthen your deep core because what will happen is the exercises I show you are more focused on your deep core. So as you strengthen that more and more, then when you come to something like a sit-up, that deep core muscle is strong enough to do those exercises properly with all those ab muscles in balance with each other. I hope that makes sense.